Welcome to our live campus tour. My name is Iman and I'm a final year philosophy and English literature student from Glasgow. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel. I'm a recent graduate from mechanical engineering and I'm from Malaysia. So as you can hear behind us, there's a bit of noise coming behind. Um, it's basically because we are a pretty old university. We have been around since 1451. Uh, and despite how us being really old, we are always trying to keep ourselves updated and nice and new, so they are having some construction behind us, so don't mind the noise. Yeah, but don't worry, we're gonna get our tour kick started right now, so let's go! So the university uh, was built in 1892, which is actually pretty old. Um, so it's nice and pretty. A lot of people think that we look a little bit like Hogwarts, which honestly I do agree, we actually seem to be a lot like Hogwarts. The building was built by Gilbert Scott, and which is, which is funny enough that um, we actually have ties to London red telephone books because his grandson actually designed it. So there's a bit of history there. <laughs> exactly, but here we are going into the main building. To our left, you will see the university bookshop and to our right, the Huntadian Art Gallery, which is one of the five museums in the university. And we, it is also one of Scotland's first free museums, so entry is free. And of course, when, the, when you're a student here, you get 10% off in the gift shop over there. So buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, make sure you get kitted out in the U of G merch. Come follow us up the stairs. So welcome to the West Quadrangle. Um, this is one of two quadrangles we have in the university. Um, behind us is the chapel, which is uh, one of the rare interfaith chapels you can find in the United Kingdom. So no matter what faith you believe in, there will be something for you. And also the fun fact, you could even get married here. So if you're alumni and you book a date somewhere in the future, uh, say a 50 pound deposit, and when you're ready, you can actually get married here, which is a very, very cool thing to do. Yeah, exactly, and the weddings here are absolutely beautiful. Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, so we're going yeah. this way. So we're going to head over to the university's most Instagrammable spot, which I should know, I have used it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> they also have many films here, such as Outlander, um, Cloud Atlas, and just talking about movies, Glasgow is a very, very filmable city. Right now, as we speak, Indiana Jones is being filmed here, The Flash, Batman, all in the city of Glasgow. So you might even pop into one of the sets somehow when you're just walking around. Yeah, but the Cloisters is a really pretty spot in general. And during Christmas time, we have fairy lights all over these pillars. So it's just really beautiful. And directly on top of us, we have Butte Hall, which is where the students of University of Glasgow will be graduating. It's such a pretty hall. Mm -hmm. It's also one of the biggest halls we have, lecture theatres halls in general. Um, which is worth it if it's over 500 over students. So if you have a big, big cohort and you're lucky enough to be inside them, you might have the chance to even at, uh, enter Butte Hall way before your graduation. Yes. Let's go ahead on this Let's way. Let's head over. That way. Okay. Oh, I really miss taking some pictures here. Yes, definitely. <laughs> it's so pretty here. You can see actually quite a lot of people are taking pictures right now. You will see, you will always see tourists here because it's such an Instagrammable university, which is good for you because you actually get a lot of time to take pictures yourself. 
that quick. But here we are in the West Quad. Yeah, so um, here is, if you step on this grass, you're in danger of not passing your degree. So I cannot step on this grass yet, as I haven't finished my degree. But I have, so... <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> it's a lot of fun U of G superstition for you. But, but the University of Glasgow has many, many different classrooms in the building alone. We have the School of Geography situated here, Adam Smith Business School. So you will always have a chance to even enter one of this classroom, hopefully. Um, I know myself, I have been inside Butte Hall, the big hall, and another small hall in the corner of the University of Glasgow. Yeah. So the good thing about the university is we have, we are not a university that stays in one position. We, uh, sorry, we are a one class. Building, yeah. yeah, we move around from different buildings. So let's say I study engineering. Uh, my class could be in Adam Smith Business School or the School of uh, Education for St. Andrew's Building. You move around, it, it, it's really fun because you never stay in one place and it's always different each year, which mm. is very useful. At the same time, if you ever get lost, we do have a phone app which gives you direction to different parts of the university, which is really helpful. Yeah, I've used it plenty of times. We also have the Hunter Halls here, which are some really pretty halls, which I, as a philosophy student, have even studied in. So, let's head on out to oh. our next destination. And I know where that is. That is my home, technically, the School of Engineering. Lovely. Which I have spent lots of time there, especially inside the labs. But let's keep the suspense. <laughs> Lovely sunny day today. It is, it the is. Campus. Which is a good time to have this campus tour. Yeah, definitely. You guys are lucky. <laughs> There's your domain. Yes, so on your left over there, that's James Watt School of Engineering. That's the home of engineering. We have, we have two different buildings, which is Ranking and James Watt North and South. Um, um, I'm, you know, Engineering is one of the big subjects we have in the University of Glasgow. It has been, um, has this pride of being the top, one of the top in Scotland and has really, really good facilities from labs to wind tunnels. You're going to have enjoy, especially if you're an engineering student. Yeah, as you can see, there's a bunch of students taking graduation photos, taking advantage of the sunlight. Hopefully that will be you guys in a few years. Here is one of my favourite spots on campus. You can see the whole of Glasgow from here. You can have picnics, just sit down, read a book, relax. It's a really spectacular place to be. Yeah, you can see it over there. It's Calvin Grove Art Gallery, which is one of our amazing museums. In the distance also, there's the SEC and the Hydro, where a lot of music events happen. About 120 a week, I think, right? Pretty much, yeah. We are a month, I guess. A yeah. month, yeah. Uh, we are the city, uh, UNESCO City of Music, so we have lots a lot of music events, from performance from artists to orchestra performance in the city centre. You name it, we more or less will have it here. Um, in front of us, right in front of us, is the Calvin Grove uh, Park, which is a pretty decent sized park. You can walk from the Kerwin Grove Art Gallery Museum all the way to the other side which is where um, the St Andrews building is actually and you can actually connect yourself all the way up to the Botanic Gardens through the little walkways in the, botanic, uh, in, the, in the park. Yeah and we're also a five minute subway journey away from the city centre and in the city centre we have lots of shops, lots of cafes, bars and it's just a lovely hub for a lovely city. We also have lots of transport links so you can get the train from Central Station or Queen Street and there's also Buchanan Bus Station which can get you trains and buses outside of Glasgow, so Newcastle, London, etc. Yep, and you don't even have to, to take a train or take a bus anywhere. The city is big but it's not so big that you have to constantly be on a public transport. You can actually walk from the university into the city centre which for me takes about 20 minutes which is, which is not that bad. And you can walk through Kelvin Grove Art Gallery to do it. So over here, you are seeing the beautiful University of Glasgow Bell Tower. Um, we always joke that you can have the best view of Guy Fawkes fest, uh, fireworks, but I have not actually had the chance to go up there because it's only for a very, very limited amount of people, which uh, I think is just to maintain the bell at the top of the tower. So let's head on. I think the best thing about walking on the campus road is you actually 
don't have to worry too much about cars because it's a very quiet road. Exactly, definitely it's plus there's just so much greenery surrounding you. So while it is a kind of modern university with the roads and everything, there's a lot also a touch of nature. And my favorite part is when they just cut the grass, it actually feels it smells like fresh cut grass, my favorite. It really does. <laughs> but yeah, so what are you guys studying? Let us know in the comments. And what are you hoping to study actually? <laughs> Hopefully it's engineering. I can talk to them about stuff too. Oh, hopefully it's philosophy <laughs> and English lit, actually. I mean, there's many, many students around here. We, you will yeah. bump into one of our own eventually. Exactly. <laughs> but we are just heading over to one of the notable parts of campus, which actually came from our old campus in the city centre. Exactly. So as I mentioned, we are a university since 1451 but we have only been here since 1892 so obviously we will have some remnants that came from the old university or the old campus which actually was situated in the far east of Glasgow pretty much where Queen Street is situated right now so we're just going to something that came from that old campus which is very important to us yeah so here is a part of the old campus which is the unicorn and the lion. The unicorn is actually our national animal here in Scotland, which is amazing. And there's another wee superstition for you that if during exam season or assignment season, if you rub the horn, like Daniel is attempting to do, then you will get good luck and hopefully pass your exam. Don't try and step on the grass and do that. I have no idea what you're gonna do to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so we're now entering Professor Square. It used to consist of 13 townhouses which host um, the professors of the university. But as we are growing to a huge university, uh, we can't house them here anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's way too many professors, but um, some of the townhouses still have their dedicated subjects inside them, like taught inside them. So number four has theology and number seven has law. And in number seven, we have a mock courtroom for all of you law students out there. And also, if you, uh, if you get on the Dean's List, you'll be invited to the uh, Vice Principal's um, house to actually have high tea in it. So this is the only house that actually is still being used as an actual house. Um, um, so if you are lucky enough, you might be invited for high tea. So that's something to look forward to. Over here on, just behind me, that's Lord Kelvin's house, the first fully electrified house of the United Kingdom. A lot of history in there. Um, obviously, you know, the fact you can walk into your house and hit the switch and lights comes on is because of this house, the first ever in the United Kingdom. Um, a lot of history there. Yeah, let's head on over to another nice spot on campus. I mean, I think Professor Square is a bit nice and quiet. It's Yeah, I've actually had my Italian lessons here in Professor Square. Really? Yes. Yeah, I never really had a really chance nice. to be in here. <laughs> it's really nice and really cosy. And I've also had a few friends make comments about the mock courtroom and it is apparently very good. Yeah. You also get great view of the main campus building from here as well, which is really nice. I mean, I studied law for one of my course in my co uh, in, for engineering, but um, I actually never set foot inside a law building. <laughs> Yeah, but that goes back to what Daniel was saying earlier, that you can be all across campus while you're studying different subjects. Which is good. It, it keeps you up, to, uh, you know, keep in shape. <laughs> <laughs> I know in my first year alone, I lost about a kilo. Just walking up and down the hill, which is good exercise. I like that is it. great exercise. But here we are moving on to a place where the science students probably argue you get the freshest oxygen on campus. <laughs> It's also a good place to just, again, sit down and relax if the soft flight post is a bit too busy. Or if you're like me, you can get great Instagram pictures here. <laughs> so, this is one of our nice wee garden spots on campus. So you can just have a sit here and study, or you can even just sit and relax with your friends. It's such a nice wee spot, isn't it, Daniel? I know. I, I know I spend most of my time here between classes just taking a quick break uh, if I don't really want to just go into another building. It's, just a, it's, a, it's a good place to just breathe in a nice fresh air away from the main street. Yeah, exactly. Plus, it's a lovely spot to sit in, at least when it's not raining. <laughs> Talking about rain, seeing that we're a country in the United Kingdom, uh, we, we are a city in the United Kingdom, we obviously will have the British weather, aka 
rain, aka sun the next five minutes. So today we are sunny, which is very good, but be smart and bring an umbrella, a good one at least, because it will most definitely rain at least once in your entire uh, school, school time here. Yes, plus Glasgow is a brilliant city, but it is an even better one when you have your brolly and your raincoat. I mean, I have two brollies in my house just because it rains that badly. It really does. Did but you see that picture the other day where the wind was so, so strong that the umbrella literally just flew off? Yeah, the, the raincoat is probably your best bet here in Glasgow. Oh, yeah, but, especially yeah. with the wind and everything. Yeah, but we're going on to one of our student union spots, aren't we, Daniel? Yeah, we are actually the SRC, also known as the McIntyre Building. Yes, yeah, so the SRC is a student union that every student in the university is automatically signed up to. And they take care of your student needs. You can approach them whenever you need anything or if you need any help in general. So here you are behind me, which is the McIntyre building, as uh, Aman mentioned, which is the SRC's home. So usually if you have any, any issues, anything you can think about, they are usually your first point of contact. You can ask them questions and they will guide you to the right place. Yeah, we also have the four student broadcasting services here. So that is the Glasgow Uni Magazine, that is the Glasgow Guardian, it is Sub City Radio, and the Glasgow Student TV. Which you obviously have the chance to even be part of it. I know my a good friend of mine is actually part of the, the media team actually of it. Yeah, and I know people part of the Glasgow Guardian, so you definitely have the chance to get involved. Talking about being involved in the university, there's actually a lot of things in, in terms of clubs and societies. Yeah. I myself, uh, is a, I, I'm a representative for the university for fencing, so I've actually traveled around the United Kingdom fencing with the university. Uh, we are, I managed to get one or two medals, which I'm quite happy about. But besides, okay. fence, besides sports, there's, there's a lot of things you can do in Stevenson Building from squash, table tennis, badminton, basketball, anything you can think about. And societies, we have UG Racing, we have uh, the Renewable Energy Team, we have the Wind Team. There's too so many yeah. you can list. And you can, all find, you can find all the clubs and society on the SRC website. Yes, you can. And also, just while we're passing here, here is the security office, and they are functional 24 hours a day. So if you need any help, be sure to contact them. That's our lovely roadworks there again, but don't worry. So the bus that just passed by, that's bus number four. That leads you straight into the city centre. It comes, if I'm not mistaken, every either 15 minutes or half an hour, depending on the time of day. And it's the easiest way to actually get into the city centre without taking the subway. Yeah, exactly. But we are just going to cross the road here so we can go and see our lovely library and Fraser building. As you can see, just beside it, there's the round reading room. So you can also study there if you don't want to head into the library or if you're bringing anyone with you to study. So we're just uh, going across one of the busiest streets uh, for the university. It's called the University Avenue, obviously. It crosses through the center of the university. Um, it is the main road is busy. So obviously be careful when crossing the roads here. Um, but you will obviously find a lot of students here and sometimes you can bump into somebody from your own country, wherever you're coming from. I know I've bumped into many, many Malaysians crossing the streets. Yeah, definitely. I am a very sociable person, so I always see someone when I'm crossing the street. Guaranteed. <laughs> because the library is like one of the biggest hubs of the university in general. Like, loads of people are there. But loads of people are also in our new building, which you will see at the end of this tour. It's keeping that suspense again, I see. Keeping that suspense. Yeah, Daniel, as you were talking about clubs and societies before, I'm also part of a club where I was part of two. So I was part of the Sign Language Society and I'm also part of a philosophy podcast, which we actually started up ourselves. So that tells you that there doesn't need to be a club already invented. If there isn't and you want it to be, then you could always start it up yourself. Exactly. And another fun uh, society I know of, is if any of you are Harry Potter fans, we have a Quidditch club which honestly, that is a fun thing. I've seen people running around Calvin Grove Park with brooms just running across the street, uh, which, is, which is really a good laugh. They also dress up as the Golden Snitch. It's someone in fluorescent yellow, which is hilarious. But yeah, we also have the GUU, which is down there, which is one of the student unions. And they host some great debate stuff. They host balls and there's also quite a few bars there. And they have a subway inside it. So you can get a great sandwich while having a nice old debate or 
bust out your ball gown. And, and he also hosts a lot of uh, Kayleys, which is a, a very Scottish um, party. Uh, I myself have actually been to one or two of them and they are honestly really fun to just relax. The dances are amazing, truly. Behind the GU is the Stevenston building, which is where the main sports building is. Um, you, that's where most of our sports are held um, from the indoor sports. But if you're talking about outdoor sports, it's further up north at the Wolfsus campus. Uh, that's where most of the field hockey's football are being held. It's a bit further away, uh, but obviously outdoor sports, we can't really have it inside the city camp, uh, in the city campus. Um, so we'll always need a little bit of a travel. Yeah, and also down, just down University Avenue, we have our gym. So that is a state-of-the-art gym, which Daniel, you've probably visited a lot of times for your fancy. So it had a 10 million pound refurbishment in 2015, which is amazing. It has a 25 meter pool, sauna and steam room, lots of cardio, and what else, Daniel? The pool is heated, so it's incredibly good for winters. I know that was once it was so, so cold. I just kind of just jumped in and just kept myself warm there. <laughs> that is a great idea as well. Or you could use the sauna and steam room for that. I've never it was too packed. <laughs> <Too> <laughs> I mean, everybody's yeah. in a gym in the winter. Yeah, because it's absolutely freezing outside. But don't worry, again, bring a nice coat or a hoodie like I'm wearing here and you'll be perfectly fine. We have like the best weather. We have cool weathers in the winters. We have nice warm summer. Right now it's so warm. Uh, partially to do with climate change, but it, it is really nice and helpful. Talking about climate change, if you're interested in that, then Glasgow will be hosting the COP26, which will have leaders from worldwide coming to discuss climate change and how to combat it. And the university itself is hoping to be carbon emission free by 2030. Beautiful timing as we just ended that COP26 topic. Exactly. I, I wish I could have been a part of COP26. I feel I, like the green man is on our side. <laughs> green, get it. <laughs> <laughs> but here we're headed up on another one of our hills on campus to our wonderful library. Talking about hills, we are called Gilmore Hill. The campus is on Gilmore Hill. Um, why are we on a hill? Because we are such an old university um, and if you think of it, Oxford, Cambridge, St Andrews, they are all on hills uh, and because we are the fourth oldest, we put ourselves on a hill as well. <laughs> but here is Macintosh House, so that is our famous floating door. It's floating because uh, it's actually actually the right place of where the door used to be. Uh, so to keep it accurate, we left it floating but we just we, we didn't reconnect it because the actual entrance to the museum behind it is actually just in front of us to the revolving doors on your left. Yeah, I feel like we're coming up to one of my favourite hangout spots on campus. I don't know about you, Daniel. The library? The library! <laughs> <laughs> I usually spend a bit of time just to study in there. But before we head to the library, something more important, which is the Fraser Building. Definitely. So the Fraser Building is home to the student support uh, team uh, and the registration and, and enrollment team um, is also housing housing the the general practitioner or technically the doctor that you visit in Scotland. Uh, it has John Smith Bookstore, which is downstairs. So any books you need for your course, they will have it, and they will price match price match it to a reasonable source. Um, what else? Do we have? Oh, we we have a career service team in here as well, and we have. Um, international student support team. Basically anything as a student that you need help with, that's the place you should go for. It's also available online though, so don't worry if you aren't able to come on campus this year, you have all these services available online through your student portal. We have pushed everything online due to COVID. <laughs> yes, we have. It's very accommodating. So, so here we are, the library. This is one of the buildings where you do need a mask, so we're going to put our handy masks on. With the university emblem on it. And you also need your handy student ID. So, we're gonna head inside, so come follow us. Ooh, slow down. <laughs> I really do like my student ID picture, Daniel. I like mine, it looks like a passport. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. All right, let's head on in. But yeah, we use our student ID to get inside the library, just so you scan it on one of these scanners and you can get inside pretty easily. but we have special passes today. So we're just going through this little small gap. Ah, the library, I've not been here in a while. So great, the library is a nice wee spot to study in. So we have books on the higher floors. So a floor dedicated to a group of subjects each. Mm -hmm. 
we are one of the oldest university in the United Kingdom. Uh, during World War I, most of the books from London were sent up to Scotland, mainly Glasgow and Edinburgh, uh, to, for, to keep them for safekeeping. And they actually asked here in the restricted section upstairs. Yeah. The library is set up in a traffic light system, which means the top zone, which is red zone, means really, really quiet. So if you really need peace and quiet, that's the place to go for. Um, the amber zone, which is the yellow zone, it's in between. That's where a little bit of noise can be sounded, uh, can be heard, but not too much. And the green zone is uh, pretty much where we are right now, so which is why we're talking at a normal volume. Yeah, but um, just down there, you have laptops and computers and everything, free to use, so you can have a use of them. There's desks all around here, and also individual kind of pods that you can use. So lots just and lots of study spaces. Lots of study spaces. And not only that, if you do need to borrow a laptop, there's actually schemes in the, in the university which you can actually borrow your laptops from, which is very useful being a student here. Yeah, there's also water fountains here, and there's a cafe upstairs as well if you need to grab a little morning coffee or a sandwich or anything for lunch. Talking about water, have you, do you understand how tasteful the Scottish water is. Oh, absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. That's one thing I always joke with my parents from Malaysia that that's, you know, to enjoy the Scottish water. Of course, we don't, you don't get that tasteful water from anywhere in the world. Definitely not. But we're just going to head out now and we're going to head over to our long awaited building. Final building that I was teasing earlier on. So obviously with COVID, there is a specific amount of students that can be fitted in. And there are signs all around the, the library as well as online on your uh, my campus to show you how full the library is and how many spaces there is inside the library, which is very useful. So you don't come in and get stuck outside the library. But yeah, you can take your masks off once you're outside. You only need to put them on when you're inside a building for your own safety and others. But, right, yeah. now let's have another short walk over to the long-awaited learning and teaching hub. Yeah, there's a good few names for this building. Um, I use the hub myself, Janu. What do you call it? I call it the Jimmy because it just sounds more lively and a bit funny. It's actually called the James McCune Smith Learning and Teaching Hub. So obviously there's a lot of different names. Some people call it JMS, some people call it James McCune. Uh, I I'm very sure I'm going to hear new names in the next year alone, so we'll see what comes up. Definitely. If there's one thing you can rely on the students of Glasgow for, it is their creativity. <laughs> I mean, the Stevenson building is now called a Stevie. And that's why I call it Jimmy, because they all sound the same now. <laughs> they do all sound the same. Yeah, just make it standardised, you know. It, yes. But you can see, it's a really lively campus. It's not situated so far out of the city that there's nothing to do and it's just study. The university is great for a good mixture of uh, for work-life balance which is incredibly important for studies. You have your study mode which is the library and all the campuses but around that you see a lot of uh, class of society, you meet a lot of people and you feel you know just like a city centre which is very very good combination. Exactly but let's head down over this way so I don't know about you, Daniel, but after seeing your engineering building, which is the James Watt building, kind of feel the need to point out my building a bit. I mean, we're going to pass by it soon, so just wait a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. So come on, and you can see my building. So this is called University Gardens, and they have dedicated subject buildings for the arts. So the English Literature building is right through there, and it's one of these lovely tenements which I love so much. Kind of nicer looking than the James Watt. Hey, what do you say, Daniel? I, I was just bigger and has laps and it has a wind tunnel. But is it pretty? Wind tunnel. <laughs> you can, if you're ever too hot, you can stand in front of wind. Okay, probably don't. Not a good idea. You're <laughs> blown off. But no, I mean, different part of the university have its own um, beautiful things to see. Like James Watt is more of a traditional, uh, no, sorry, modern engineering building, but um, you have the main building, you have University Garden, which is all of the more modern stuff, uh, the, um, historic and stuff, uh, which gives you a nice balance. As I said, we are old, but we're modern, so we have a better both worlds, um, which is why we're going to talk about the James McKeon Smith Learning Teaching Hub. Um, James McKeon Smith is the first African-American to be given a medicine degree, and it's given by the University of Glasgow. 
And you know why that is, right? Yes, because in no other university in the world, and especially in America, would actually take them in. So here we actually have a few more works, development works going on, just so that the campus is already for when you new students will be coming. It's the um, research hub that's being made, right? Well, research hub is over there in the other corner. Right behind us, that is where the School of uh, Geography is as well. Uh, Gre uh, Gregory Building, we have the Computer Science Building there. We even have uh, well, the QMU. Queen Margaret Union, which hosts a lot, a lot of performance. Uh, I think Nirvana performed here once before they actually became famous. Red Hot Chili Peppers as Red well. Red Hot Chili Peppers, lots of things. You, that QMU, it's, it's like another incredible unit to be inside. Yeah, exactly. But let's head over to the James McKean Smith Building. So again, talking about medicine degree, um, coming up in front of us, actually Wolfson uh, Learning, and, uh, no, Wolfson Medical Building, which is the home of the School of Medicine, which is also one of the university's pride and joy, which is ironic, which is right in front of James McKean Smith Learning Teaching Hub. So if you can see just right in front of us, um, that is the uh, Wilson Echo Building. So if you're studying medicine here, you will be based there for most of your time because that's where all the labs are for them. Yeah, it also has um, a really cool kind of glass wall slash roof. So that helps kind of cut down the electricity in the building because you get lots of natural light inside it. So coming up on our right, this is the James McKeown Le uh, Smith Learning and Teaching Hub. Um, funny enough, actually during my, one of my tosses in the engineering, uh, in my engineering uh, school, we had an event where we did some engineering design and apparently one of my friend's design has been partially implemented into this building, which shows how we as students are actually coming and implementing new stuff for the university, which is pretty cool. From what I heard, it was just actually this red things up here that prevents um, heat from coming out, but also prevents heat from coming in. So it actually pre reduces electricity consumption as well. Wow, that is great. Two really eco-friendly buildings right beside each other. Pretty much, yeah. And as I said, we are all in the newer part of uni, so the research hub, which is coming up in 2022, hopefully, uh, is just off to that corner, uh, which is where, so we can tell this part is more of the modern one. But as time comes, the other side starts getting uh, up and modernized as well. So it has its own turn to go, you know, um, brought down and built up, but we have a sense of old sense of new. Yeah, and as Daniel said previously, uh, even though we are quite an old university, we're always improving and always making new buildings and new things for students to enjoy. But yeah, we're gonna head inside now, so time to put on your nifty mask. Woo. So welcome to the James McKern Smith Learning and Teaching Hub. You can see it's nice and big and spacious and new. It just opened up in uh, May, if I'm not yes, mistaken, 2021, which is very, very new. Exactly. And as Daniel was saying earlier, the James McCune Smith Building is named after James McCune Smith, who was the first African American doctor in the world. He go gained two degrees from the University of Glasgow, one of which was a medical degree. And once he got his degree in Glasgow, he went back to America and opened up multiple medical practices for people of colour. So let's go upstairs so we can see all the, te the study spaces. Exactly. This university building is so spacious and so cool. It's also the first building to have an escalator in it, which, which is pretty cool. my lazy self absolutely <laughs> loves. And if you want to go to the top floor and you don't feel like uh, taking an escalator, there's actually the lifts as well, so it's not too hard to get to. But yeah, let's... Before we go there, yeah. so over there is um, one of many one of many, many uh, canteens we have here. Well, we can't record a canteen, it's more like uh, places to eat. <laughs> we call them cafes, we have different names already, but I usually I just say food centers. Yeah. Uh, you can see Plant Fusion, street, fu uh, street Food and World Cuisine. We have many, many different uh, places to eat. Um, this, is, this is the one in James McKinnon. We have one in 1A The Square. We have one inside Wolfson. Uh, to be honest, you'll, you'll find new places to have snacks in which is incredible yeah and just through here we also have lockers that students can borrow and we also have bike stands so if you bring a bike you can always prop your bike in there and it will be perfectly safe shall we get upstairs let's go upstairs over here ah <sighs> It's a good know. break from walking a bit, don't you think? Definitely. I love the escalators. And it also helps you see all the great architecture work put into this new building. 
Like, look, we're just passing a nice wee study area for a bunch of students and people are hard at work there, which is lovely to see. Yeah, most of them are postgraduate students because now it's summertime, but most of the students here are now postgraduate students. Uh, but when the school term starts up again, you will have, you will see a lot, a lot of students from all sorts of courses just situated around the building. Exactly. So we have just entered the, well, we call this, well, it's the fourth floor of uh, James Buchanan Smith. Um, I'm just going to call it the Jimmy. Yeah. But it's one of many floors of uh, study spaces here. Uh, you can see over oh, there is one of the um, seminar, rooms. seminar rooms that you might even have the chance of studying in. And we also have a big lecture theatre here, which is one of three in this new building. So, which is really, really cool, we I think. We can give them a better, closer look as we head up the escalators. Though, yeah, definitely. So we'll head up to another floor to show you what my personal favourite part of this building is, and I think Daniel's too. But as we go up, just look over to your right, then that's one of the brand new lecture theatres, which is competing against the size of Butte Hall. And not only that, you know, some students don't like peace and quiet to study, and this building, even has one of those quiet floors for you to study in. It's just over to uh, my right, your left, uh, which is the quiet zone, it's the quiet floor, and you can only access it through the lift, uh, just right over there right now. But yeah, we're gonna go over to one of my personal favorite parts, which is where I love to hang out and have little study dates with my friends. It's, I don't know it's incredible, it's also good for group works actually. Exactly, group projects, etc. So, these are our beloved pods. One of four or five, if I'm not mistaken, and there's many across the whole building. Yeah. It's a great place to um, get together and have some uh, study time together. Uh, and hopefully after uh, COVID and everything, we can actually be together without social distancing that much. Uh, you can book, you should be able to book this um, uh, pods in the future, but as of now, it's not open due to uh, COVID restrictions. Um, but on that note yeah on that note that is the end of our tour we really hope that you enjoyed it if you have any more questions or anything where can you find us Daniel? you can find us on uh, unibuddy which is on the university website and besides that pop any questions you have down below in the comment section and uh, we'll do our best to uh, answer those questions but yeah it was great to take you on this tour and we really hope to see you soon here on our lovely campus and well, as, as we said, we might even bump into you somewhere on the street. Yeah, definitely. So, welcome to Team UFG. We hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.